In this video on indices, we're going to have a look at what happens when we have to take the power of a power. Now, the best thing we can do to establish the rule is just to look at a simple example. Now, you know that anything squared is just going to be multiplied by itself. So, y to the power of 5 all squared is just going to be y times y times y times y times y. And then we're going to multiply it by itself which is going to be y times y times y times y times y. Now, what we end up with there is just, uh, can be simplified down to give us y to the power of 10. Okay, so you can see that what's happening is that your 5 and your 2 are being multiplied together to give you 10. Okay, so we see that our rule is that a to the power of m all to the power of n it's just a to the power of mn. Okay? Now, let's have a look at some examples and work through these. <clears throat> so if we're asked to simplify x to the power of 6 all cubed, you just say, well, that's going to be x to the power of 6 times 3, which is x to the power of 18. For this one, y to the power of 2 or y squared all to the power of 4 is going to be y to the power of 2 times 4, which is y to the power of 8. Okay? For this one, um, p to the power of 7, all to the power of negative 4, is going to be p to the power of negative 28, because 7 times negative 4 will give you negative 28. Now, you don't want to leave your answer with a negative index, so what we'll do is we'll move the base on power downstairs, so we end up with 1 over p to the power of 28. And that's you. Now, sometimes you'll come across questions which will have a coefficient involved as well, and we'll deal with the coefficient first of all. Now, 2 and x to the power of negative 5, they're both being raised by a power of 3. So 2 cubed is going to be 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. And then if we deal with x to the negative 5 being cubed, that will give you x to the power of negative 15. So we can tidy that up and leave it with a negative, a positive index, and we leave the 8 on the top, and we have x to the power of 15 on the bottom. Okay? Now, when we did the video on negative indices and working with negative indices, we said that very often that would be useful when it comes to doing other questions on indices. And this is an example of that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 1 over x to the power of 6, and I'm going to write it as x to the power of negative 6. I'm going to move it upstairs, and the power will change to a negative. So these two things are just exactly the same. And now that I've got it written in this format, I can just use the rule x to the power of m all to the power of n, and I can say that's going to give me x to the power of negative 6 times 3, which is negative 18, and I can move the base and power downstairs, and I get 1 over x to the power of 18. And that's how you would do these questions using that indus rule. Okay. So I'm going to give you a few questions to do yourselves. So you can pause the video and you can have a go at them and see how you get on and then come back and check and see if you got them correct or not. Okay, so the first one, relatively straightforward. X to the power of 4 times 3, which is 12. So X to the power of 12. The next one is just going to be Y to the power of 5 times negative 2, which is negative 10. And we move that downstairs, give us a positive index. And that's us done, 1 over y to the power of 10. For this one, <coughs> you've got a negative times a negative, so we end up with p to the power of negative 2 times negative 4, which is 8, so p to the power of 8. Um, for question d, we've got our coefficient, so we'll deal with that first. 4 squared will be 16. And then x to the power of negative 3, all squared will be x to the power of negative 6, because negative 3 and 2 come together to make negative 6. We'll move the base and power downstairs. We'll leave 16 on the top. So 16 x to the power, or 16 over x to the power of 6 would be your answer there. And for e, <coughs> I'm going to bring what's on the bottom back upstairs, and I'm going to write it as 3 x to the power of 7. Notice how the power changes as I move it upstairs, all cubed and that then we're going to uh, cube the 3. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. 
and we end up with x to the power of 7 times 3, which is 21. So that would be your answer there. So I hope that you find that helpful. I hope you got these five questions correct. And uh, that rule is uh, pretty straightforward to use. Okay.